talk of the day, and it is my privilege to introduce you to these two ladies, Emma and Ashlyn. Um, they are members of the community design team in Fedora. And um, as has been mentioned in other sessions, the Fedora design team relies a lot on PenPot as a tool. So Emma and Ashlyn are going to walk you through how exactly we've been using it for one of the projects that they both work on, which is the Fedora website's revamp. So I will hand it over to you, Emma. Lovely. Thanks for that, Mo. Yeah, so our talk is called Mockups and Motions and how the Fedora designers create with PenPot, which I think is a very clever name that Ashlyn came up with. Um, so yeah, we'll get into it then. So first of all, who are we? I'll let, I'll let Ashlyn introduce herself first. Okay, my mic's on. Awesome. So I'm a web developer and UI UX designer. I work with Fedora websites and apps as well as the Fedora design team. So I'm in a really cool place at being able to bridge between both our development workflow as well as our design workflow. And uh, yeah, it's just a really exciting thing to be able to see this project go from the mock-up phase before we had any code laid down to uh, getting our code infrastructure figured out. And now we're almost ready for deployment. It's just been great. How about you, Emma? Yeah, so I'm part of the Fedora Design Team as well and Red Hat's community design team. So I started with um, the community platform engineering team here in Ireland about a year and a half ago. And I got involved with the design team then around a year ago. And that's when I would have got involved with the web and apps team as well with the revamp project. So I mainly do the mock-ups for the websites and then I pass them over then to the developers. So that would be kind of my role in um in that project um yeah so ashton's going to go through then um the next slide sorry no worries fedora websites 3.0 it has nothing to do with nfts it's all about revamping the face of fedora from the ground up so fedora websites and a little bit of history on that there's been a few iterations of fedora's websites over the many years that the project's been around and when we were coming time for this new revamp, which was determined that we needed to do, we needed to update our infrastructure, we needed to update our designs, and uh, yeah, we just have a growing user base, and we needed to be able to be accessible and accommodating of everybody's needs. And a part of that was looking at what our team's needs are, and being able to make sure that our site infrastructure is modern, and that being able to get involved with it, being able to contribute, whether you are a technical person or not very technical, that you'd be able to find a place in this. Uh, so a lot of what this meant was that we needed to figure out our tools. We needed, and this is both our design and our development tools, because we needed to start uh, testing out how, how our users are going to be able to navigate, how they're going to be able to move around things. So we needed a tool different from Inkscape that would be able to allow for that interactivity and would be a little bit more streamlined for us to be able to collaborate because we're such a big team all over the world. Uh, but also for from the dev side, we needed something that was using some newer newer languages, newer tools that more devs nowadays are going to be familiar with. And uh, we'd be able to have a bit of a cleaner architecture with that, as well as being able to get it for, for people who are program managers, uh, content writers and editors, marketing, being able to edit simple things like strings and images and stuff on our web pages. Because right now, in with the older systems, in order to be able to do that, you had to have a knowledge of a number of things, including HTML, container deployments, um, Python, depending on which sites you were looking at. So we really wanted to bring this all together, which is what brought us to having a simple CMS that allows people that has a GUI so people who aren't technical can get involved. We have our pen pot that allows designers as well as developers to be able to review and engage with the designs. And we have Vue and Nuts.js, which has a pretty modern and HTML kind of like workflow. So it's more intuitive than uh, other systems could be. But today we're just gonna focus on the whole design bit. All right. So PenPot, we found it to be a very powerful open design source design tool. Uh, so we're using this in the same way that a lot of other teams would be using Figma or Adobe XD. And I think that's like its primary use case. Um, and that's what we use for our wireframes and mockups. And this has really sped up the, the process, like while we've been developing, 
uh, the design team has been able to start pumping out more mock-ups um, and being able to move really, really quickly on them and being able to get feedback really quickly as well, uh, which Emma's going to talk about in a bit. And it's really cool. She's done some great work there. Um, but other things that we've done is our UX testing and getting feedback on that. And that's something that I have a little more experience with. And I'll talk about uh, the navigation system that we've been making for the new website design and how we've gone through a few iterations and been able to get community members to be involved in trying out this stuff. And then the other way that we've been using PenPot is as a collaboration tool. So we have had a lot of sessions on the, the development team where um, there's just a lot of ideas, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of people, we're all over the place and we've got a lot of ways that we want to do things. And we needed to, to streamline that process. Just having a list of meeting notes and someone frantically trying to write those ideas down while everyone's like wanting to get their ideas out and heard, you know, it creates stress that distracts the team from the goal of why we're there. So even for the development team, we've started using PenPod in certain situations when we need a more um, divergent way of thinking to kind of get all the ideas out so we then can, can converge on our main topics, our main concepts, the main interests and focuses across the team. We're, we're able to use it to find our commonalities and have that define our process as opposed to the conflict from when we run into differences. And that really in the early days of getting this project off the ground, I think that those sessions when we use PenPot like fixed a lot of the problems that were starting to brew at the time. So both teams have used this, um, the design team quite a bit more, but the development team, we've used it in a few spots and it's been extremely helpful to us. And so I just wanna talk a bit about our collaboration sessions. And I'm gonna speak on this mostly from the development side. Uh, but one of the, the main ones was our framework configuration ideas. And so we were at the time that we started using PenPot to do this, we were already at the point of having figured out we were what we, like 90% of the of us were like, yes, we are going to use Vue. Uh, we're probably going to use Nux, but we aren't quite sure. We've got some config stuff, but we had people that were React devs. We had uh, people that were really heavy into Python as well. Um, and there was a couple of folks who were interested in using Hugo, uh, but nobody else in the team knows Go. So didn't really work out for us. But yeah, we had to really get together and figure out how we were going to organize our framework, which framework we were going to use, and how we were going to put it together. And if you get 15 devs in a room to talk about configuration, well, that's that's a recipe for disaster really, really quick if you don't have the right tools to harness all that energy. And that's what we did with PenPod. So this little diagram I've got going on here is kind of like, a very, very mini representation of what that session looked like. And it was very, very productive. Um, from that, we were able to come up with our agenda items, we were able to delegate tasks, and we we're able to get moving way quicker. Uh, another thing that we uh, used it for was when we were planning out our component design and how we were going to organize things there. We ended up using a little bit of pen pot just to get some of those initial ideas off the ground. Because uh, in our meetings, again, we would have quite a few people, especially in that that earlier phase, and they were all wanting to get involved. And we needed to be able to have a way that everyone could tangibly map their thoughts without stepping on each other's toes. And that's where the collaboration ability of PenPod, even our team of devs who many of them don't touch design software very often, if not ever, uh, were able to really quickly figure out how to start getting their ideas down. And from a top level, we were able to look and find those trends. and that was a huge success for us with PenPod. Uh, so yeah, it was great for us getting our feedback ideas from our devs, reducing disagreements, and then building understanding. And uh, I think this is a really good place to segue to the community feedback work that Emma has gotten that uh, she was doing. And I'll just switch over to the next slide for that. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, so as Ashley was saying, you know, with uh, developer feedback is important, but then also when you're working with Infodora, um, community feedback is <clears throat> is important as well. And with design, especially, it can become a bit difficult to share designs properly, especially when they're when they're like website mockups. And um, so since PenPot is web based, it's more accessible then. So um, with the mockup, I'm able to enter view mode on the prototype, and a shareable link is then generated. 
Um, I, you can also modify the permissions and then when you want to, you know, you can destroy that link then basically if um, if you don't want that shared anymore. So that's really helpful when it comes to sharing within the community on say um, discussions um, <clears throat> just or on Element anywhere. Like I can just share that link anywhere and anyone's able to just view that mock up within their browser. Um, and then on the next slide, I just included just a little diagram of that kind of process. So usually what I do is when I finish up kind of my first iteration of a mock-up, um, I'll usually write up a post um, on discussions and kind of just walk the community through kind of everything I've done, why I did it, kind of inspiration. And then what will happen then is there'll be a discussion and conversation in the comments section. People will recommend changes, things they think don't look well or don't work well. And um, so what I'll do then is I'll take those suggested changes, you know, I'll implement them and then I can I can update the community then on that same post and just kind of let them have another look. And then, you know, they talk again and um, see if anything else needs to be fixed and then implement those suggested changes again. And then we'll end up then with a final mock-up. So this is just a kind of very simplified version of that. But that's kind of the process um, I go through anyway when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to um, doing one of the website mockups. So this process, I will go through with more static designs, but for more interactive prototypes, uh, they need, need user testing sessions, which is what Ashlyn's going to talk through next. Yeah, so one of the projects I was working on during the summer was looking at Fedora's navigation and how big, how many websites we have and trying to figure out a way to make one nav bar that can capture all of it. And that was a really challenging thing. At one point, the wall behind me, it was not actually, it's not actually mountains, obviously it's a wall. Um, and I had it completely covered in little sticky notes of all of the different pages, trying to figure out a system of grouping that would be logical for community members who've been around for a bit, as well as community members who are newer people that are just starting to get to learn about Fedora. Um, one uh, part of this that was really fantastic is I had a friend uh, in Calgary, the city that I'm in, who she had just finished a UX design program and was looking for some projects to get involved in. I'm like, well, here and look, I've got something for you. And uh, we got together and started chatting and she doesn't have a very strong tech background. Um, so she wasn't really knowledgeable of Linux or what any of this is. And I was like, you are gonna be perfect for this uh, because we. I need someone who doesn't have all the blinders that I have. When I look at this and think about these things and how they're grouped, you know, I've already got a lot of prereq knowledge and there's a lot more people coming into Linux that don't have that same technical um, experience. So we need to make something that's gonna be friendly for those people. So I wanna I want work with you. Plus, yeah, you already, you know that the tools uh, you know, the workflow, let's do this. So we got together and a part of the, the early testing, the very first thing that we did is I sat down and I had all of Fedora's websites opened up in tabs and uh, across multiple browsers. And we just like started going through and, um, you know, trying to figure out what made sense. And she was confused by quite a bit of it. Um, and that was great because that was a good place for us to work from. And over the next, I think it was about two months, uh, of periodically meeting together, we came up with um, this current, this nav system that you're seeing on the screen. So this was a, this is a fairly low res mockup. Um, I had come up with a, an, a concept, well, I was building off of a concept from some other nav systems that I was studying at the time. And it was kind of a context-based navigation. So that's where we have this green, Sorry, the green, the blue, the orange, and then there was a gray nav as well. And those were to designate the download section. So pages where you could download Fedora editions on uh, and spins, et cetera. Community pages, support pages, and contributors. We identified those as the top level categories that we could group everything into. So our first method uh, was to use a context-based thing. And this was kind of inspired loosely by GNOME. Um, to try to keep everything. So if you're if you're in the downloads area, just keep you focused on downloads, but give you a line to be able to get to community and support, et cetera. Um, support, though, we also kept that top level all the time. Um, 
And then, yeah, we had these drop downs, these hero drop downs. This is again, very, very low res, uh, but our goal was to be able to test how people found the terminology. We needed our con to test um, the mental model from our context-based approach. So that was one of the first focuses. We also needed to look at how uh, users interpreted the visual cues and labels on all of this. Many of these labels are ones that have existed in the community, like labs and spins and, and whatnot. But as far as like a navigation system and moving through these top level labels, like downloads, community support, contributors, how are they going to engage with that? And was it going to be logical to them? And then we needed to sort of see the types of cognitive load that people would get under while searching. So our first test session, we've built our first prototypes um, with this. And we, sorry, just one sec. We built our first prototypes and then we tested them at Nest 2022. So this was a cool way to do it. We just basically got a whole bunch of people in on this session that we ran at Nest and uh, everyone that was a participant. We had a bunch of uh, tasks like find, find the uh, HyperKitty or find uh, um, Fedora Kino, uh, Kino it. Um, that's a word that I don't know how to pronounce. And we basically just got them going through and searching through things. And as they were doing so kind of in the chat or out loud, talking about where they were confused, where things made sense, where they didn't make sense. And we were able to take from that information and A, determine that, our co that the context-based system was creating too much cognitive load. It was too much work to be able to search through. And it wasn't actually adding the, the benefit that we thought it was going to do. So we needed to adopt to a new strategy, but we were able to figure out that these top level categories were more or less comfortable for people. And much of the content in them made sense. We had to shift things around a little bit, but we were able to figure out what we can build on and what we can nix from the plan. And that brought to us to our design phase two. So we abandoned top-level context-based nav for an interactive set of hero navs. Um, we also found, and so this is me kind of thinking about it from design and dev, that it'd be easier to maintain and smoother to scale as well as deploy. Uh, so this is like for us to deploy on our own site as well as to send out to sites that aren't within um, like the uh, fedoraproject.org um, uh, domain yet. So sites that aren't in the repo that we're currently rebuilding in, we wanted to make a nav that we could have in this as well as one that we could send to the other teams and then be able to have that put up on their pages, uh, which is a phase that we haven't gotten to yet. Right here, we were just trying to figure out uh, how to how the nav's going to look and feel and loosely what the architecture underlying uh, the requirements that that's going to be. The context nav had too much overhead to be able to maintain effectively. Uh, but what I wanted to show you now is the prototyping that we did in fact uh, make from this. So I think it's pretty cool. So this one isn't set up for testing yet. So when we do it for our next round of testing, we'll have uh, just some grayed out Fedora pages underneath, just so there's a bit of orientation when you are actually at a place. But this is our home level. Uh, the about, that would just take you to the uh, index page. We might be getting rid of this one. We've also lately, recently renamed downloads to get Fedora. Uh, those are some changes, but it gives us this nice little interface. So we have a sidebar where you can move through. And we can get to all of this. This design worked really well for us too because it can scale. We can add or contract if we look at emerging editions. Right now there's only silver blue, but recently there's a few other options in here. This white space gives us room to be able to put uh, information, advertisements, pop, like not pop-ups, but extra info about things related to their various editions if we need to. Um, and we can fit up to, yeah, nine items very, very comfortably in this. And yeah, so if I just click through, we can see with PenPot's uh, prototyping, there's um, some hiccups here and that that's all right, it's doing pretty good. But um, there, there's more to be improved and there's more for us to learn how to do it. This was the first that we've uh, done prototyping on this scale. And it was really exciting to build and uh, 
took a reasonable amount of effort, but by using reusable components and setting up a library, we were able to make um, we were able to make everything easy to duplicate and edit. So the workflow, which was initially building this quite challenging, the first time that we went through, we made everything as its own piece. But the second time through, we were able to make these root components here. So we can see all those slides that I was just uh, clicking through. And we're able to edit them and tweak them up really, really quick. And we're able to do that uh, later after the, the mock-ups or the prototyping has been made. And if we check what the actual prototypes, they might take a second to load because it's a fairly large uh, file there. So this is what that whole thing looks like. We get this kind of monstrosity of slide set. The prototype, we can start to see some of our flows. So this is something that I, I know that uh, for myself was a huge learning experience because I've never uh, prototyped uh, to this degree before. And understanding more deeply how the flows connect and move through, I know my second time around, that's going to be something I take a little bit more attention to because I feel like I didn't quite nail it with that. But being able to get something that can be edited, tweaked, and reviewed and modified by people that don't have programming experience is super, super useful. It allows us to be able to make changes on this level and review them, as well as when we start building, we can make changes there too. So our mobile prototypes in this file is empty. We haven't ported those over just yet. Uh, but yeah, so this has been a really fantastic experience coming from Figma, which presently has some more tools, but it would, it's been around a lot longer and, uh, and has a lot more money behind it. This I found to be a 100% viable alternative for building uh, products like this and building designs like this and being able to also test them with users. Being able to do so with open source tools is amazing because the uh, first of all, the number of pages is here. This would have already gotten into one of the paid realms of PenPod. Uh, we wouldn't have been able to do this uh, this many pages on on a free tier as well as with issues of like people being able to contribute and get involved and share and work on this. Yeah, we would have been stuck having to fight a lot of uh, unnecessary problems based on their pay scale and uh, the way that they handle that. So this is lovely. Likewise, with being able to build assets, and we'll see if these load up, we can see all these different components that I've set up. And uh, this is kind of a precursor to uh, what Emma's going to get into next, because she's done some really cool things with uh, asset building as well. Uh, but being able to just take these things and drag and drop to build, that's I found that to be a fantastic workflow and really, really enjoy it. And yeah, so so this is kind of how we've gotten to this last phase of our design process for our navigation. And we'll be doing our next round of user testing. We've already got it built out in code. Uh, partially, but we'll be able to do some more testing, make sure we can iron out any bugs and kinks before we build our version of it that'll be able to be deployed to third party hosted sites. Yeah, it's very exciting. Emma, if you want to talk about assets from designs. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, like Ashton was just saying there, um, you know, you can store elements and other content in an asset library so you can use them over and over again. Um, you can store like different things. You can make components, you can store graphics, typographies, color palettes. And um, so, and then what you can do is once you have a library built up, you're able to turn them into a shared library that other team members will be able to access then. So that can be very helpful when it comes to working with a team who, you know, would regularly need to access the same files. And um, if a new member joins all the assets, they need to start building the mockups for the project are right there. You don't need to you know, send them on everything that they need. It's all in the one place. Um, and what I thought we were able to do was download the libraries into like onto a folder onto your computer, but we were wrong. But if you go on to the next slide there, um, a kind of workaround for that is what you can do, you can highlight, say, all the tech, all the images, say, that you want to download. Like, say, if you're a developer and you're 
building up this website in VS Code or whatever code editor, and you need to have these images in your asset folder, um, you'd be able to highlight all of them and export them then in the sizes that they actually are and the format that they are um, on the mock-up itself. So that kind of brings me into the next um, slide there. So building from visuals. So the prototype also can be viewed fully on any type of browser. Uh, this makes building the website easier. You can look at the code side by side with the prototype. So you know you know where things go. You know it's easy to follow. See what images you need. Download. You know you can. It's just a very useful tool. Um, and for the next slide, I just wanted to talk about um, how does Penpot relate to Fedora's values? So the Fedora project, if you don't know, is a community of people working together to build a free and open source software program. And I got this from the docs. Um, or in plain English, we make an operating system and we make it easy for you to do useful stuff with it. Um, Fedora has core values that the community follow. Uh, these would be called the four foundations. So those would be freedom, friends, features, and first. So the four, <clears throat> the first foundation then freedom. So at Fedora, we choose free alternatives to proprietary code and content and limit the effects of proprietary code on and within the project. So Penpot is the first open source design and prototyping platform. And um, it's non-dependent on operating systems. It's completely web-based and it works um, with open web standards, so SVGs, you know, scalable vector graphics. This works great along with other open source software such as Inkscape, as they, you know, also work with SVGs. So you can build up an SVG in Inkscape and, you know, import it onto Penpot, and there'd be no issues, no compression, anything like that. Um, the next one will be friends. Then, so uh, the Fedora community is made up of people from all walks of life working together to advance free software. Um, Penpot also have a similar mission. Their goal is to provide an open source and open standards tool to bring collaboration between designers and developers to the next level, which I fully agree with um, from a designer's perspective, you know, the handoff over onto the development team is just a lot smoother. You know, there's no back and forth trying to, you know, different assets, things like that. It's just, you know, you send one link and everything's there. Um, yeah so then at the next one then features and uh, so fedora cares about excellent software our feature development is always done openly and transparently and anyone can participate just like we were saying at the start of this anyone's able at the start of the conference i should say anyone's able to design the fedora design team you know if there's any team within fedora like even the web and apps team you can you can join um, and you can start working on any issue on any team that you'd be interested in. Um, Penpot also shares this ethos. Um, I know that anyone can collaborate. The code, along with a contributor guide, is available on their projects, uh, their projects um, GitHub page. And I know they also have um, a community forum as well, where you can you know, ask questions or report bugs, anything like that. Everything's completely out in the open. Um, yeah, so the last one then. First, so Fedora adopts um, a strategy of advancing free software through consistent forward momentum. This usually follows a release early, release often workflow. Um, Penpot updates often also. I know that they have a dev diary blog that's published to the community and that kind of just highlights, you know, all the work that's been done, all the bugs that they're after been fixed, uh, all the bugs that um, are after being fixed since the last post, I guess. Um, and there's also a really nice quote on their website um, that I think fits into this very well. So they say, we also, we also have the sense of urgency and we need to act fast. There's too much at stake, which I think is just kind of ties together very well. And also apologies for flying through those slides. <laughs> um, I know I talk very fast, especially when I'm nervous. So. <laughs> um, Yes, that brings us to the end of our presentation, I guess. And thank you so much for listening. Um, and yeah, uh, I know we have some questions. So yeah, we'll go through. Yes, yeah, so let's let's get to the questions if you guys are ready. 
Um, first one is what feature or feature improvements do you wish you had in Penpot? I wish I had the feature I thought we had, which was <laughs> downloading the libraries. Um, so what I'd like to do, I know you can download them as a Penpot file and also as an SVG component, but instead of saving as all different components, say on your different files on your computer, um, it just saves in one large SVG. So I'd like if they could be saved separately, it would make, you know, handing off to the devs that bit more easier because they just have to click a button and they have everything downloaded. Um, I am not sure about you, Ashton. Is there anything you would like to see? Oh, yes. There, there's one particular little detail uh, regarding gradients. Um, we use uh, the light. We have our colors set up in a design system, which is been amazing that we've been able to use and that's been really cool um, but with gradients when we click on at least last time I've done this when clicking on the colors from our design system in the little box there while doing a set to set gradient colors it would turn it off the gradient to make the whole thing just that color so we were having to go and grab the uh the, called the uh, hex codes and drop them in it's like a minor thing but it'd be really nice if you could just like throw the colors in from there that's a major one. So Emma, this is just me um, expounding as a, a random person here. But um, if you've ever tried downloading the PenPot file format, I at one point, and I don't know if this is still the case, I had tried that and I found out it was like a zip file and the assets were in it. But I don't know if that's the case anymore. That was definitely an older version. But that is something that it's an yeah, open project. <clears throat> we can talk to them about it. I remember we did it before um and it worked but i haven't been able to recreate it since then like i can save it and it saves as if on my computer and then when i am um, unzip it and um, it's like the svg is just one large svg with all the components kind of in there so i don't know if it's something i have to put on separate boards maybe um i'll just have yeah, to it could be well, Sorry. anyway, okay, so we have two more questions so far. Um, the next one is, do you have a template for the meeting organization in PenPot that you described, and would you be up to share that? Yeah. And I wonder what is the best way to share? Can you download the PenPot file and then post it somewhere for people to import? Oh, yeah, you could do that, actually. Like, is that, sorry, is that a doing right now kind of thing? Oh, no, you don't have to do right now, but I think it was something they were asking if you you would be willing to make it available. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We also use this for evaluating our CMS. That went through a lot of workflow. So here on meetings. Yeah. So we yeah. Can, you can see here some of our issue brainstorming. That was so sort of like, a, an affinity diagramming exercise, right? So we were yeah. breaking it into categories. That's right. I was trying to remember the, that term, like all that. Oh yeah, the diagram. fancy word, playing with sticky notes. Yeah, it's really all it is. Yeah, so that's one. And very similarly, we have these where we are breaking up our tasks into our workflow tasks and stuff. This was kind of nice to be able to have the images right next to our planning space. So I think at one point, all these sticky notes were all over, and people were just writing them as they did, and then we took them and organized them into this. And then we were able to kind of move forward a bit. Yeah. So, this, okay, so the was... next question is um, when and where do you work on PenPot with the Fedora project? I would love to see how you're using the tool in process. So I think that might be if you wanted to go back to the Fedora design or uh, PenPot project, and maybe we could just give a quick tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this navigation design, this is like various stages. Uh, I ended up making a drafting versus uh, our little hot dog version here of like, yeah, let's try not to edit this one because we started getting some contributors getting involved in the mobile version. Uh, but yeah, so we you can see kind of our UX flow space, early design concept ideas when we were very first coming up with it. Um, and yeah, so this is the space we do that. Drafts, we've got... Uh, this presentation was actually done in PenPot, so we we're pretty happy to be able to use this for that purpose too. Um, 
some of our planning here. Uh, new FPO. So these are a lot of the these are all the mockups that we've got for. There's a bunch of the mockups at least. Yeah, I think these are most of them. Um, for our designs for our new web pages that are being built, as well as a component library that we were working on just over half a year ago. So that's the where our file for getting our colors and our typography assets kind of figured out so that way we don't have to manually do it all the time. I'm gonna go back. Oh, don't go too far back. Um, yeah, our meeting sections, event pages, that's, yeah, we're working on Flock and we've been talking a bit about making other um, follow-up pages to the Flock new landing page meeting notes and then libraries which i think we needed to move the fedora design system content into here at some point okay that's that's where it lives in branding it's really cool being able to see the the, the planning work that's done on the, the wallpaper releases here too that's like really interesting to be able to scan and see how people are working on that. I also like the <clears throat> the library features all for the likes of the Fedora um, characters. You know, if I wanted to do something quick with those, I'm able to just kind of go into the library and just grab that source file. And then I can mm -hmm. just, you know, make a graphic then that way. I think it's it's nice to have everything in one place and it's, and it's very visual as well. So, you know, that kind of way. I find that like, Google Drive and stuff it's you know folders within folders but I like how you're able to set like a cover image and um, it kind of helps me navigate through it a lot better. I find that too like being able to just yeah the, this sort of way of organization is really nice. I think we should start taking advantage of this libraries and templates tab down here more too. Which is yeah. Really cool. Uh, sorry, does, I hope that answers the question. Does that does that kind of like a decent walkthrough? I thought that was great. Okay, so and we have two more questions that have queued up as you were answering. Um, the next one is, when do you think the new websites for Fedora will be implemented? I know this is hard to predict, but I am super looking forward to seeing all of this work in production. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. So our plan is to launch for F38. So you're going to get a, a new version of Fedora and you're going to get a new full website. It's going to be pretty rad. Okay. And the next question is, have you considered creating a Fedora instance for PenPot? Well, clearly I have not. <laughs> um, I'm curious what that would entail. Would you be able to elaborate? I think probably they mean hosting our own. And um, if anybody is curious in hosting their own, um, I'm I'm kind of stubborn. I really like the Podman project, and I wanted to see if I could get it working on Podman. And if you if you, I'll post um, a link in the chat. But you can actually, if you wanted to, get your own copy of um, Penpot running on your local system using Podman. Um, it's, you know, a web-based application. So, you know, you're basically deploying containers on your local system. Um, during Pablo's talk yesterday, he did mention talk of a desktop application, but I don't know, um, I don't know more of the details about that. So that's something we could probably go back to him and ask about too. But in terms of Fedora, um, I think that penpot.app is working well for us. So I don't foresee us deploying our own penpot in the near future, but I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I I remember trying the the Podman one, and I was I was having a hard time getting it to run, and I think I eventually did, but I wasn't able to get it to connect the data up on like the remote. So like this one, I wasn't able to get this information into it. Um, I did, and I cannot remember how I did it. Now it was kind of like one of those. 2 a.m. and still drinking caffeine for some unholy reason kind of sessions and I had deployed it as an Electron app and that was kind of cool but like a lot of the packages I did to do that had some security vulnerabilities and uh, weren't being maintained so I thought it wasn't worth relying on that deployment and just to stick to the web based one because I knew I could rely on that. 
That makes sense. And it looks like um, the question asker said that answers their question. So that's good. Um, we don't okay. have any more questions coming in. Um, I have my own question for you two. Um, if you could change how the Fedora design team uses PenPot, what kind of changes would you like to see? I would say it would be really cool if we could get more uh, more of a push and more movement on using prototyping features. I feel like that's an untapped resource that would be really cool if we could start getting a, a stronger hand on, as well as um, our libraries. It'd be really like, because uh, we've been using them and they're doing pretty good, but I think that it's still a thing we just haven't gotten sharp enough with the workflow with them. Um, and that's that's me tangently being in the design team commenting on that. So I'm mostly I'm more in the de dev side of things, but um, I know for myself, yeah, like we could spend a bit more time uh, sharpening up our, our libraries and whatnot. I think we'd be able to make better use of them because I think when we started doing these meetings like this, I think this was fantastic. And um, I don't know if it's like a thing with working with some outreachy interns to come up with a couple very strong use cases. For, for doing this, we could build off of what we've already done. Um, yeah, I just I think that there, there's some untapped potential basically that we could start reaching into. Um, how about you, Emma? Yeah, I agree with the the libraries part, building up the libraries and stuff. It would make onboarding into the team a lot easier as well, just to kind of you give them access to the pen pot and they have access to all the assets they need, really, you know. Um, yeah, I'll have to have a look through and see what isn't on the in the libraries at the minute and start kind of just tipping away at that myself. I think we that... already have another question in the queue, if you guys are ready. Um, is a Fedora Badges website redo in the queue? Yes. It's a bit distant in the queue, but it is in the queue. We want to get this launched uh, through first because it's been a pretty big initiative for both our fairly new websites team as well as for the design team. Like there's been a lot of mockups having to be made very fast. Um, and from speaking with a few folks, it seems like our heads are kind of like, let's get through this. Let's make sure that this first launch is good because there are follow up launches that need to happen with that. Right. It's not a one and done kind of thing. But this first one is the big one. So we need to make sure this is a success. And then from there, there's been some talk about getting some people working on badges. That's great. And um, you guys want to wrap it up and we'll finish out the day? Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to us. It was really, really cool to be able to present this work. It's been a huge priority, I think, for Emma, yourself, as well as me for the past, like, over half a year now so being able to like show what we've been doing and show how we've been using this open source and very powerful tool very cool thank you yeah thanks so much and i'm very excited for tomorrow as well the last day of the creative freedom summit and i know um jess and marie from the fedora design team are also doing a talk on fedora badges and inkscape if i remember yeah <laughs> so i'm looking forward to that as well and the Pictionary Social. So yeah, excited for tomorrow. All right, so we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow.